welcome to Math Talk. I'm your host, Brian Heisler. We're getting close to the end of the series on some popular questions for the GED math test, so I hope you found the video so far to be helpful. Today we're going to take a look at algebra and we're going to look at some equations and inequalities. So let's get started. We have a question that asks for the solution set to the equation below, x squared minus 4x minus 2 equals 10. And so when I'm solving an equations, I really want to get my equation to be equal to zero. And so in order to do that, I'm going to go ahead and subtract 10 from both sides. And when I do that, I'm left with an equation that says x squared minus 4x minus 12 equals zero. And the reason why I want to set it equal to zero and set it up like this is because now I can do what's called factoring or what I call reverse FOIL. And when you factor an equation, a quadratic equation like this, where the leading coefficient is one, which means there's basically no number in front of your x squared term, there's a trick to doing it. And the trick is you want to find two numbers that will multiply together to get that last term, negative 12 in this case, and will add together to get the coefficient of your x term, in this case, negative four. So we're going to try and do that. And to do that, I need to figure out the factors um, or numbers that multiply together to get negative 12. And when I think about that, I get this table here. I get 1 times 12, 2 times 6, and 3 times 4. Now, I'm just going to kind of focus on 12 itself. I'm not really going to worry about negative or positive. I need to look at two factors that I can add together or subtract together to get 4. I know ultimately it needs to be negative 4, but let's just focus on 4 right now. So 1 plus 12 is going to give me 13, so that doesn't work. 12 minus 1 is going to give me 11, so that's out. 2 plus 6 is 8, so that doesn't work. But 6 minus 2 is 4, so I have some version of 4, which is great. That means I can use those two numbers. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and cross out the other two sets of factors and look at 6 and 2. Now, I need these two numbers to add up to negative 4, which means I need one of my numbers to be negative. Um, and because it's a negative 4, I need actually the bigger number between 6 and 2 to be negative. So in that case, I can use the values of positive 2 and negative 6. Because 2 plus negative 6 is a negative 4. So they add up to negative 4. So great. Now what I, what I can do is I can factor my equation into two different quantities. And the two quantities are x and then the two factors. It's really that simple. So it's x plus two and x minus six. I'm just multiplying them together. Now the reason I do this is because if any one of these two quantities is equal to zero, then my whole equation is equal to zero. So I'm just gonna split it up into two separate equations and solve each of them. And when I do that, I get x plus two equals zero, x minus six equals zero. One step to solve for each, I'm going to subtract 2 from the left-hand one and then add 6 on the right-hand one. And when I do that, I get x equals negative 2 and x equals 6. And there's my solution set to this equation. All right, let's take a look at some more examples. Solve the inequality. Pretty straightforward directions, but a pretty ugly-looking inequality. There's decimals, there's parentheses, there's fractions. And so let's take this kind of one step at a time. All right, what I want to do is I want to turn that fraction to a decimal. Everything else is given to me as a decimal, so I want to keep everything as a decimal. And so a quarter or a fourth is represented as 0.25. So I'm just going to rewrite this. Next, I'm going to go ahead and distribute my negative 4 on the left-hand side into each term inside parentheses. So negative 4 times 3.3 is negative 13.2, and negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. And on the right-hand side, everything stays the same. Next, I want to go ahead and move all my numbers to one side of my inequality and all my x's to the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and add 8 to both sides because I'd rather keep the numbers positive instead of subtracting 10 and a quarter. When I do that, I get uh, the negative 8 goes away on the left-hand side. And on the right, I get the 18.25 and the x terms stay the same. Now, since my number's on the right, I need to put my x's all the way to the left. And to do that, I'm going to go ahead and add... 13.175x to both sides. Now on the left hand side, I highly recommend using a calculator um, to add negative 13.2 plus 13.175. 
Um, and when you do that, you get negative 0.025x is greater than 18.25. The 13.175 x's go away, and so this is what I'm left with. Now, I have one more step to do to solve this inequality. I need to divide both sides by negative 0.025. Um, and again, I highly recommend using the calculator because that's a pretty ugly decimal. When you do that, you get x is less than negative 730. So it's important to note here that if you, if you saw, the inequality sign actually switched directions. Um, and that's actually what's supposed to happen. The trick to solving inequalities is that whenever you have to multiply or divide by a negative number in the last step, you actually have to switch the sign. Um, so in this case, I'm switching it from greater than to less than. And the reason 730 is such a large number is because when you divide by a really small decimal, it's really the same thing as multiplying by a large number. So that's how the number shot up so high to negative 730. All right, let's look at a word problem and how to solve an inequality from that. We have a company that will pay you for selling candy bars. They will pay you $15 plus 45 cents for each candy bar that's sold. How many candy bars do you need to sell to make at least $50? Okay, so I need to piece this word problem together into an inequality to be able to solve. And so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. My inequality is gonna look like this. And the reason why it's gonna look like that is because it says they're gonna pay you $15 plus they're gonna pay you 45 cents for each candy bar that's sold. Each candy bar being sold is kind of like a variable. You know, who knows how many you're gonna sell, you're gonna to have to solve for that. And it's 45 cents for each one, so 0.45. When you do that, you're gonna to need to sell, they ask you, you know, how much do you need to sell to make at least, or greater than or equal to, $50, okay? So I've put together my inequality, I need to go ahead and solve it. So the first step I'm gonna do is subtract 15 from both sides so I can get my variable by itself. And that's gonna leave me with 0.45c is greater than or equal to 35, all right? One last step, I'm gonna go ahead and divide both sides by 0.45. I recommend using a calculator because again, it's a you know kind of awkward decimal. And I get c is greater than or equal to 77.8. Now, I can't really sell 77.8 candy bars. I'm not gonna like take a bite out of a candy bar and sell the rest of it. That's not really good for business. Um, so what I really need to do is, you know, figure out the whole number. I can't sell 77 candy bars because I need more than that. So I really need to go up one and sell at least 78 candy bars to make at least $50. It turns out if you sell 78 candy bars, you're actually going to make $50.10 by plugging it back into your uh, inequality. So I hope this helps as you get to questions that ask you to solve equations or inequalities or word problems. The key is you wanna take it one step at a time. And remember with inequalities, if you have to multiply or divide by a negative number on your last step, you have to switch the sign. Be on the lookout from the last video coming up in my series where I take a look at some charts and graphs. As always, thanks for watching.